Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you again. This is the bag in the bag, all the to toolkits to use for fun and active classes. The, to make fun and active games, then I will introduce the tool to how to use it. Last time, I introduced phonics games and water games, but today I will focus on sentences and how to use this toolkit for reading classes. So it will take almost one hour to go. I really hope to see you in person, but now this is the situation we can meet on online. And anyways, I'm really happy to see you and welcome to, you know, listen to my magic toolkit teacher training today. So I will try to share really practical, you know, tips how to use them in the classroom. So let me introduce about magic toolkit the components and some things inside first. So today's seminar is about speaking and sentence practice with the magic toolkit. And just do we will, this is the components as you see. So in the blue back, there are two dice, but these dice are so foldable. You can see me, right? So can you see the dice, uh, silver and gold? Dice, usually I can fold in this way. And you can make a box too. So two dice, and then all the you know, magnetic cards will be used in this pocket and then attach it. And then there is a big wheel, circle, the three circles wheel. I call it magic wheel, and then the three Separate circles are spinning separately too. And for well, and then there is a magic headband. Can you see the yellow, blue, green, red, purple headbands? And then there are ten headbands I have. So the headbands can be used for we can wear it on your head. I will show you later. And then on your head, and then just you can use it for the game, very colorful, and then student can be very enjoyable and active classes you can make. And there are two handy boards, the pink and green color you can see, pink and green, but you can see we have four different colors and then forward and backwards. And then there are two OX cars, front side O and X, and a back like this. So I will show you how to use them for your fun classes. So there are two kits, but can you see the you know blue small blue books? Small blue books. This is you know explanation. You can see 30 games inside, and there are magnetic pages. So let me go to next page. One by one magnetic card pages. There are one whiteboard marker and with eraser and then ABC cars and phonics cars, and then phonics cars, and there are some cars with colors and shapes you can teach at the same time. Now can you see that there are empty cars? You can write and erase anything on the cars. And then there are more cars we have is animals. Animals, animal walls, and walls, uh, weathers. So these are cards will be offered with this magic toolkit. And the next one, last time in April, I had a teacher training for you guys. And then this teacher training for water practice games. They are, of course, they are really fun. And then water matching, alphabet matching on the, you know, magic wheel. And this is a phonics practice. Can you see phonics? Can, can if you spin it, con, can, can, cut, they can practice it with spinning the wheels. I told you three round circles are spinning separately. So you can make sentences and phonics and words. And next thing is you can help students practice the short vowels. Even with a magic E card, you can make a long vowel sound practice by spinning three separate wheels, just to spin and spin and spin, they can study whole one book. And next one is headband. How to use a headband? You can wear this headband on the hat and 
You can separate it into two teams. One team is pictures, one the other team with words, and then they can match. Kind of this is I call it body matching. So one team has pictures, the other team has words. When teacher says one, two, three, then they have to find their partners, same word, the same picture. Then they come to teacher, they say the word aloud, then teacher can give teacher can give you know, points. This is how to use a dice. Dice, there are two colors. One is gold, one is silver, and uh, one, you can put some cards on it, the other, uh, water cards, and the other one, you can put picture cards on it. And then just, you can roll it up, and then they can match it. Almost all the time, student cannot match it perfect. Just a picture pen, but word bag, then they, even though they are not match it, but they can recognize and then they can repeatedly practice it many times. So it's really useful for students. So this is dice game I showed you in April too. And then this is how to use a uh, magic handy board. Magic handy board. Actually, this magic handy board games are brain based running. When you teach students, usually they are listening, listen. But li only listening doesn't help a student to, to improve their skills. They all the time have to practice and practice more. So not only listening to teachers' voice, they have to speak more than you, teachers. So, so this is the kind of how to make students activate their brain and if you help your students activate their brains, then they can keep their short-term memories and then they can move their memories to long-term memories. That means they study well and then they can use it better. So I, I will teach you how to use it, but today I will focus on sentence practice. Maybe you can adopt how to teach words. I wrote to the words here, but you can erase it. You can write it with a whiteboard board marker. You can erase it. First time they practice with words and then erase it. Only remember the colors that they, we help a student to remember their memories. And the next one is had a band matching, water matching, I showed you. And this is uh, today I will start. Today's focus, how to use magic toolkit from the you know, magic wheel how to use it for the sentence practice. So I told you three different wheels. Three different wheels are moving differently. So I showed you this phonics practice, right? So even that was just the you know, PPTs, but you can spin this one. You can spin this one. So you can match it like then, dag, dad, state, but know that you put E, then they like this. So this is the way you can just to see it. And the other one was I showed you on the PPTs was like a picture and was, we can match it. Without was, just you can spin it. Without, spin, without you know, this, just you can spin. Can you see it? You can, oops, you can spin. And if it stop, then you can show it. What's this? If we want to teach the color, then you can say, what color is it? If you want to teach shape, then you can ask, what shape is this? Or what is it, right? And then they can answer, it's a diamond or it's orange. So you can just spin and match it, or sometimes you can use it. If you wanted to teach a shape, it's a triangle, then can you find out where a triangle is? Then they can put triangle here and then they can match it. Triangle, this is the one way you can use it. Or the other way, just to put the, all the you know, words here, you don't have to match it. Just put everywhere, anywhere. Then just you can ask a student to spin it. Just to spin it. Do you remember spinning? When you spin it, you don't have to hold here. Then you cannot spin well. You have to hold it aside and then spin it, then it spins well. 
Can you see? It spins better, right? Side. Then, just so you can, it stopped diamond again. Then diamond here. Then can you find out diamond? Then they have to spin second, you know, circle. Second circle. And then they have to match diamond to diamond like this. This is the way you can help the students. They can match it. So just without this was, you can put it later. Or without pictures, they can find and put it on. It's okay too. So anyways, you can use it. That was the last session. But today I told you we can make it as a you know, sentence. Simply when you make a sentence. Actually, do you remember the cards we can write down with this board marker? I wrote it. I, you, he, and then I wrote B verbs here. B verbs, M, R, E. So they can you know, move and match. I, M, right? Or you, R. We can practice this one. Or here, we don't need an M and R here. It, it, can you see it? And, oh, I'm sorry. It and, we need R. And we need it and they. So we can write and raise very easy, right? I can raise very easily. And they. Then, can you see the was here? Well, let me use the arrow. Arrow, I can put it on. And then we can use this arrow. And then I can spin it. Arrow points a book, right? A book. Then what do you need? A book is is or are. What is that? Is a book matching with is or are? Yes, thank you, it's ease. Then we can use it is a book, right? This is a how to make a sentence they can spin and match. If it's a book, it's not a book, then if we spin and it points books now, right? Books, then we have to move are here and then we can use they are books. And then they can see and speak with you. So they can read, but they can understand the structure with the first part, subject, second part, verb, third part, adjectives or objectives or, you know, the adverbs, adjectives. So students can understand the structure much easier. So as you see, there are so many ways we can spin and teach. So this is the one way, not only I am, you are, he is, I like, he likes, if you want to put she or they, you can do it. So this is kind of, you know, subject and verb matching and objectives too. So you can spin and just match and then they can understand the structure and then they can make sentences. So if they spin it, only writing and seeing, they cannot recognize some components very exactly, but they move they use their hands and move it, that means they can activate their brain too, they can use it. So this is how to use sentences. You can see that this big one, I spin it, you can imagine it. Next one is, this is kind of a job, right? Jobs, occupations. So he is a nurse, she is a nurse, or we can put they are, or I am, a doctor, so you can put more subject and verbs and then they can make sentences, not only using pictures, they can see the letters, they can see the structures. So this is the way we can use it. And the other one is even we can mix up not only be verbs, present tenses and past tenses too. So they can see in one word, they can recognize which one they can be matched. Usually, you know, sentence and grammar points the, on the book, they can circle and check. But circle and check, that means they just they have eye contact. And then they can read, of course. But just to this one, they can spin it. That means they have to recognize which one should be matching. So not only using books. Sometimes if you use tools like this, then they can practice more and they can recognize better too. So this is 
they were books or they are books. Comparatively, they can see present tenses and you know past tenses together. So this is a good way to teach. And the same way to teach how to make uh, sentences with dice. So let me show you dice. This is, as you can see, it's the subject part and verb part. They roll it, and then if they have a day and like, then they have to make a sentence. It's kind of giving, up, giving keywords. And then they try to make sentences like talking about myself, talking about something. So they like ice cream or he eat, then they have to change. He, what, it or it. When you keyword eat, then they have to say he, yes, eats sandwiches, right? Or I play, but he, when they, ha even though it shows only play, when they have the keyword he, then he, they have to say he plays. So this is the way, uh, and next one, not only making subject and verbs, we can use it for the tenses. This is a future, past, present, and go, sing, have. So we put future, past, present, two for each. Then two futures, two past, two present. So students who studied, you know, uh, past tenses or future tenses, when you teach present tense, they answer all the time present tense. And then we go to, you know, present progressive. Then even though I ask past tense, they answer with a present progressive. And if we ask a past tenses, this is the time to study past with the book. Then even though I ask a present tense questions, they answer with the past all the time. So we have to help a student to comparatively, they have to use the different tenses at the time we can make a game with the dice. So let me show you with a real dice. Yeah, real dice. This is the one. Can you see? This is I put past. Here it's kind of, yeah. Present, past, present. Future. So two futures, two present, two past, and the one dies, one die, and the other die with a verse. See, go. You can have, this is actually have, it's erased a little bit. Have, have, and eat, and what else? Uh, sing. And then we ask a student to roll two dice, just to throw it, and then they can catch it, they can, you know, you know, roll down, it's okay. And then I choose, okay, future and have. Future and have. Can you see future and have? Then they can have these two keywords, and then they can make a sentence, like, I will have a book tomorrow, like that. So only given keywords, they use their information and knowledge, then they try to use it. So this is for output practice. Last session in April, I tried to help you uh, just to okay, show you the game's input practice and output practice together. But this is more than output practice. They can see it. it's like a game. They can make their own sentences. Let me try one more time. Anybody can make a sentence for these two words? Okay, let me have, okay. Past and take. Past and take. Anybody can make sentence past and take? My case, I took a, I took a nap. I took a nap. Or any other teacher can make sentence with a take and past tense? Good, right, right, right. I took out the trash, good. Is that right? Sure, sure, good. I took out my trash, okay, very good. Like a student can use the word they have, but how about, let me give you easy one to present tense or kind of sing. How about this case, present and sing. I took a lot of photos with my family last weekend. Did you really? <laughs> I like taking pictures and photos with you too. 
Yeah, good, good sentence. I took lots of photos. That's good. How about some pictures? Can you make a sing, sing, and present? Like if you roll it and then it shows two keywords, then can you make sentence sing, present tense? I can sing many songs. Really? Okay, honor, honor teacher. Please sing so many songs next time when I have you know training. Then hope you can come and join and sing many songs for us, please. <laughs> okay, thank you, good. Thank you, any teacher. So we can use to do dice, and not only two dice, we can add these dice with OX too. This OX like a kind of a signal for students, signal, not giving keywords by teachers, only listen and repeat, listen and repeat. No, make them think. So do you remember sing in present tense? I can sing a song, right? I can sing many songs. But if I show with this signal, you have to make a sentence, then I cannot sing a song. They have to make a negative sentence. So, when you talk to students, just to give keywords and then use this one, follow it, then they can do it good for young learners. Okay, so this OX card can be used. So this is the way how to use dice. This dice game is not only for this one, we can use for like we can put the picture cards and the other dice with was. So we can throw it, they are matched or not matched too. And then let me go back to the you know uh, presentation file again. And then this is how to use a present tense. They can practice tenses with a verb. And then you can change the word. They can practice not only making sentences, they can practice irregular verbs too. So this is a good way to see how to practice irregulars too. You can use put six verbs and you can give only fingers with a present, past, future. You can give a signal. Next one is, this is the headband. Headband. This headband, as you see, we can use it for the role plays. So when you have role plays or drama classes, they can wear costumes or they can do something, of course. But if you use this headband for role plays or you know drama classes, they can wear their headbands and then they can draw or they can write the name or characters they can put it on. But when I have my students, you know teachers, I was a teacher like you guys for more than 16 years and more than 16 years, and then I just used a lot of games in the classroom. So without this magic headband, just we can do role play, of course they do it well, but we can help students, they can involve them more, they can recognize, help them recognize by themselves what they have to do better. Means we can use this headband, if we help a student to put their names on it, then they act a little different. So that's really important for students, make them feel they are really joining to role plays or some dramas. So just in the classroom, you can use it like a character using. So uh, you can see me, see bigger, bigger screen with me. I will show you the headbands. We have 10 headbands, five different colors we have. Five color, each two headbands, so you have 10 headbands you can have. It's not green one, okay, you don't like green one. So pink one, we can wear it, but this back side, Velcro's, Velcro's. So why this, you know, soft side is long is, all different size can be adjusted. So if it's big, just a little bit. It's a small, then you can just do tight. So this is the all different size for all different sizes. Small babies, they can wear it on their waist too. Small babies. So they can, you know, some teachers know about the Running Man program, Running Man, Korean Running Man program. They put this one here and they, they put the cars back. If you put this cars this way, maybe here, this way like this, then you can put the cars on this way. Like they can take out their cars then they can play learning men for the world practice. It will be good to good idea. But I wear it here 
and then this is the way we can wear the headband. Then we can put the card on it. So if it's a water, I draw a train like this. It's attach it. So this is way how to use it. So you can put one team picture, the other team, you know, what. Or if you put the, any characters, they feel like I'm the you know, person I have to act out. That will be very helpful. So this is the way. Let me go to the you know, PPT again. Then more activities you can use for headbands. So this is Sally and Jacob, but you know, I will give an example, of course, with one story page, one story book, I will give all adoptions at the end of this, you know, training. So I will just show you a good example of how to use it. Then it's just kind of a general explanation now. So there are uh, five different color headbands, but two each. So 10 headbands. And the next one is headbands and, ah, not only, uh, let me go back to the, you know, homework page again, I'm sorry. Do you remember this magic candy board? Magic candy board, you can write anything. And can you see not only the headband with magic candy board, we can use a character card too. So let me just, let me draw something on it. Sally and Jacob, we can draw it too, Sally. Jacob. So we can write it just to hold it as a character. This is my character and then they hold it. They can do their role play. And then we can raise it to, I told you, we can use it for everything. And this is not only for the headband, we can use this, you know, magic candy board for a character game. So there's some teachers who didn't attend my April teach, you know, seminars for them. Let me try to show you the how to use this magic candy board game for the phonics and walls now. Just, you know, extra practice. So somebody listened last time, it will take one or two minutes, let's practice it. So this is one. I'm going to write down phonics or what is better, phonics. We can use phonics practice too. Let's, let me try phonics. B. And D. Can you see this color with a B and D? But this orange is B I wrote, blue is D. Can you see? B, D. B, D. So can you repeat after me? If I show you this word, you have to say B and D. Blue is D. Right, good. Orange is B, great, yes. Then can you say, if I show you, you have to say B, D. Are you talking? B, D, B, B, D, D, B, D, B, D, 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 B, D, D, B, 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 D, B, B, D. So you can practice it with your student. Try it. So you can make a rhythm with your student too. And you can help your student to sound it. B, D, D, B, D, B, B, D, B, B, D, 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 B. They can practice more. So not only the words, they can practice sounds. Let me change this one B to book. What is B? Book. How about D? Desk. B. Desk, boo, desk, desk, boo, desk, boo, boo, desk, boo, 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 desk, boo, desk, boo, desk, boo, oh, desk, boo, boo, desk, boo, desk, desk, boo, boo. Can you do it? Let me erase it. Can you remember the color orange is B? I erase it. Blue is you know, D. Do you remember what is this? Book. Desk. Good. Sophie teacher, thank you. Desk. Book. Then you have to speak together. Maybe students will say, desk, book, desk, book, 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 book. Student teachers, you don't have to use your voice. Just to show it. 
use their memory, they can practice it. There are four different colors you can make. Four was practice with this one. Poop, desk, pink, apple, cat. Can you remember? Poop, desk, apple, cat. Poop, desk, apple, cat. Poop, desk, apple, cat. Apple cat, apple cat, poop, poop, desk, desk, poop, desk, apple, apple cat. So you don't have to make, you don't have to use your voice just to show it. Can you try? Are you ready to use your voice? Even though I cannot hear you, do it, okay? You did it well? <laughs> yeah, this is the way. I was a teacher like you guys, right? So teaching job is really tough, but really happy. So when you go into the classroom, when you meet your student personally, whatever, so this is really, really exhausting job and tiring job and energy using job. But we don't feel it during the class time. We are so happy all the time. Just when you come out from the classroom, we feel, oh, whoa, what happened? I, I have to eat something. I have to drink. So teacher needed to save your energy, not only saving energy for yourself. You have to save your energy for better classes. You have to help your students have more chances to speak in the classroom. Then teacher should be happy first. If you are tired, a little bit angry, then they cannot happy in the classroom. So you have to be happy. So happy, first you know, condition is you should be healthy. Healthy and good condition. That means you try to find out good tools and good teaching tips, but you don't have to talk too much. You have to give more chances for your student happily. That's a really important one. So this one, let me go back to my, you know, presentation. That's one I just showed the last time, one of, you know, activities with this magic toolkit. There are explanations on this small book too. So you can see this small book and then there are explanations, of course. But let me go back to the PPT again. Then you can see this one for sentence practice. Okay, if I go to, before I go to the sentence practice headband, this is about the game, not only for matching, not only for characters, we can make unscrambles, sentence sorting games. So, so you can write down, I go to the park, even period. Then six students come out and then they can pick up the car. They put the cars on their headband. They have to find their positions to make complete sentences. That means the students are running and find their position. They make one line and then all the students unscrambled and unsorted the was structure. Then they have to say the sentence all together. I go to the park, period. So this is the way you can use it. On the book, all the time they are writing for unscrambled sentences. But you can just use it for active class unscramble. So you can take out sentences from the book, you can make and use it in the space of the classroom. This is the, you know, uh, how to use it. And next one is, um, yeah, this is a bigger, you know, screen. And uh, the other one is, this is, you can use it not only for the headband, for the, you know, dice and for the, you know, what is the magic and the board too. So, uh, the ha uh, head event is a story reading and contents pair. Kind of, I go to the school, then you can write down on the small card, and then kind of you can uh, print out the pictures and copy, and then you can put the you know, cards on the other cards. You can scotch tape on it, scotch tape on the card, and then just you can use picture 
and sentence matching or story sequencing too. So you can put the pictures, which story is the paragraph one, par paragraph two, paragraph three. So all the stories or buzz and games can be changed into space, you know, learning, space moving and learning and fun games. So this is the way how to use it. And the next one is just we can use this magic handy board for the sentence. Do you remember I wrote book B and D? And then we practiced, you know, um, practiced B and D and book and desk, right? Like that. First time you can write down on the I like, I want, or can you, or do you practice? But today, just to let's practice I like and I want. So let me go back to, let's say, I'm going to write down I like, I want. So this is I like and I want to like. So they practice it. First time input. So I like something. I want something. Like if we have dice together, can you see it's kind of mixing up and then it diffuse on and you know all together. So we roll it and then there is a kind of what? Horse. Horse, and then student can pick up one. I like horse. I want a horse. I like horses. Like they can make sentences to practice. And then dice one more time. Instead of a die, then you can just use, just we can spin it. We can put any cards like this is a scare. And then we can use this is scare. They pick up. Then I like the scare. I want a scare. Like they can make any sentences. Kind of big them up. Not only using this. But if you teach some food, with a book, then they can talk about themselves. I like apples. I want apples. Because they can, you can show it and then you can make it. So just to how to make sentences. So this is the one how to use it. And then not only this one, you can mix up this OX card too. Then how about, I like apples. Can you make sentence? I don't like apples. What is that? Yes, good. I want apples. I don't want apples. So if you use this one, you don't have to say negative or something, something. Yeah, I want like water. I want water. Good, good teacher. Green teacher. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. So any teacher can make what you want, what you like. So the comparatively, they can make sentences with four different ones. Even for to use a student memories to use their brain more, they can erase it. Like want. Even you don't have to use I too, just that they can choose. I like your sentences. So they can remember. Do you remember what? I like, I want. Or just you can use sentence too. Like do you remember put I, instead of this word, you can put I, they, he, she, it, spin, and choose. They can spin and choose, and then they can mix up with this one. So when you use this magic toolkit, only use this tool and this tool, this tool separately. No, you can mix up two tools together or three tools together too. Then that will be very helpful for students for 21st century skills. You know what 21st century skills, right? Then they can well mix up and link and collision and just the fusion, everything they can do it well. So that's really important to fusion teaching too, right? So this tool can be mixed and linked and just can make a fusion very well. So this is the one you can make a sentence practice. Yeah. Okay, this is I like, I want. And if we go to next one, I should you want, this is kind of OX board. And then you can help a student to make affirmative negative sentences. On the OX board, you can ask a question to your students. Like, if we ask a question to your students, can you ride a bike? Then usually they can ride a bike, right? Maybe seven or eight year old students. They can ride a bike, of course. And they will all the time answer what? 
Yes, I can ride a bike. But you know, sometimes you can show all something different too. How I can show this OX that we can make ask questions like teachers, you answer me. You answer me. Can you can you ride a bike? Anybody can ride a bike? And yeah, many teachers you answer yes I can. Oh, okay. Lean teacher, you cannot. <laughs> Lean teacher cannot. Okay. Some teachers can or some teachers cannot. Then Andrea teacher, Andrea teacher, you cannot ride a bike, right? And then some teachers who can ride a bike, I ask a question like this. Okay, can you ride a bike? The student might answer almost, yes, I can. For the students, if I show this card, answer me this. Then they're going to say what? Oh, no, I can't. Because teacher, I can't, but why do I have to answer? I, no, I can't. So if you ask a student if they can answer what they can all the time, but it's not very fun. Even though I can do it, but teacher asks me to answer negative, they feel like, <laughs> no, I can't, right? How about teacher, lean teacher? Can you ride a bike? And Lin teacher answered me, no, I can't. But if I show Lin teacher, can you ride a bike? Would you answer me? Lin teacher, Lin Jet, Lin Ji teacher, can you ride a bike? You have to answer me with this. Ah, <laughs> yes. Maybe Lin teacher typed, yes, I can, but Lin teacher, yes, I can, right? How about Honor V20 teacher? Honor V20 teacher, can you ride a bike? He typed already, yes, I can, but... No, I can't. Ah, okay, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So, when you use this one, the student feel like, oh! So, we give very small, you know, small font for students. So, we can uh, use not only for full making full sentences, you can give something, ask something different that they can answer it. And if we go to the next one, then... Let me use this, you know, storybook page and then how to use not only for, you know, course books and speakings. For example, there is a storybook. I use the storybook from Bricks uh, Education. So this is, they have a storybook reading 30, 50, you know, 70, 80, 100, 120, and 300. And for TOEIC and TOEFL, but I choose 50. 50 means around 50 words. 50 words, this is the level simple pattern practice. Can you see the stories, teachers? Let's read it together. Let's read it together with me, okay? You have to read the title first. A giant in the forest. A giant lives in the forest. In the forest. I, A giant I, lives in my eyes. Yeah, I, I see the huge giant. I see I smell the with my giant. nose. I smell, I smell the smelly giant. I hear, I hear with, with my, my ears. ears. I, I hear the loud, loud giant. I I touch, I touch with, my with my fingers. I I touch the, the giant's hard toe. I, I taste with, with my, my tongue. tongue. My tongue. But, but I don't, I don't the like the eye. taste of the giant. Okay. So this is the story. So can you see the keywords here? So when you teach this parent, yes. then you have to choose some pictures keywords then they if they know the keywords only remember whole stories very easily like first story titles they can write giant forest right giant forest there are five keywords can you see see smell hear here touch touch Taste. So this, this is first two in a column keywords is let's say what well, again? See, smell, smell, hear, 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 touch, 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 taste, 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 taste tongue. Right? So can you see my fingers too? Can you see only my you know PPTs or can you see my fingers too? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So my first yes. finger is. C. C. Okay. 
two fingers smell smell have a smell fingers here here fingers touch touch fingers taste taste you remember what is first finger yeah see smell hear touch Touch, taste. taste. Okay, let me turn off. Let me turn off this, you know, PPT for a while. Let me see. You can see me only. You can see me. So can you remember my finger? What is that? See. See. Smell. Uh, hear. 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 Touch. Taste. Touch. Taste. Okay. If you don't see the book, even though you remember five words, you can remember what was the first one, second one, third one, right? So after teaching parents, you can help your student to do this one. One finger. See. See. Smell. Hear. Smell, sorry. Yes. Yeah, hear. hear. Touch. Touch. Taste. Even though you know they didn't read the whole book yet, just one time maybe you gave a chance to students to listen and repeat, but now they can have chances to practice it like with only these words. What do you see? I see with my eyes, right? So see wow, yes. eyes. How about how do you smell? Which one? I smell with my nose and then I smell uh, I hear with my ears yes. how about four touch I touch with my fingers fingers what are fingers do you remember fingers I think with my tongue I taste with my Tom. Okay. And can you remember these ten words? See, eyes, smell, nose, hear, ears, touch, touch, fingers, taste, tongue. So they, they are ten keywords. So even though they know 10 keywords, they can read it more comfortable, they can remember better. Let's go back to the storybook then. You can see the story again. Now you have to remember 10 words. This is the way you can teach the keywords and word practice. After that, you can use it for after reading practice too. So can you see here? So can you read it? First one, I see with my eyes. I see the huge giant. So C, I, and then you, we can add a three. There are three water groups, Hughes, giant. Second one is smell, nose, smelling giant. Third one here, ears, and then here, sound, loud giant. Touch, fingers, what is that? Touch the giant, hard toes, what toe? Hard toe. And then, uh, feet, tongue. And what is that? But I don't like taste the giant. Actually, <laughs> me too. I don't like taste the giant. It's a funny ending, right? Even though you don't read it, can you remember with only my fingers? Can you see my fingers? I see with my eyes, right? Then what kind of giant? See? Hughes, they said, right? And I see the huge giant. So they practice see, eyes, second group, verb. Nouns for the body part, then adjectives, and if they have 15 keywords only well, then they can remember the whole sentences without reading it too. So after reading practice, see if you give keywords, they can practice better. So this is the story why I I will just do next page. Next, oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Then next page, you can see this one. Oh, uh, this is the way we make you know stories. I can you see the five words about the you know sense five senses and then five body parts 
And then we can add more adjectives to too. Then we don't need this magic world they are matching, and then they can retelling the whole story again. This is how to use retelling story with magic wheels, not only matching games. Like the first sentence is, I see with my eyes. Only keywords, right? I see the, what is that? Huge giant. You remember it. Second one is, I smell with my nose. I smell, smelly, smell, smelly giant. Even though I didn't read the story before, this is the, today I prepared what I didn't read before, picked up, but I can mm -hmm. very easily. Yes, I like the book. So you can help with this. This, with this is for before reading water practice, before reading water mm. practice, and after reading summary part, you can use this magic wheel too. But as you see this picture, as you see this picture, not only the, you know, just magic wheel, you can use the headband with the how to match. Touch fingers, kind of a matching game. Two groups, one student group is for, you know, verb part, the other students only want nouns of body part. And then they match and come to the and say the teacher, they have to say the two sentences in a row with the two keywords. So they can remember and memorize much easier. Even same reading part, another game is, another game is with these dice. With the dice, just one part you can put fingers, ears, nose, and the other part you can put uh, uh, you know, see, touch, smell, taste, hear, like that. I put I am or not, but you can change it to see, touch, smell, taste, hear, feel. Then they roll it, then they can make a sentence. The funny thing is, you know, this guy thing, what I like and children really love is if we roll it sometimes, tongue and smell, right? Then they have to make sentence, I smell with my tongue. Is it right? No. I smell with my tongue. Is it okay? No. Then they have to make sentence. I can't smell with my tongue. If it's match it, they can make a positive sentence. But if they have some wrong message, they have to make sentence. I, I can't. Right? So they can make a sentence various and then they can do it again. Sometimes they can make silly sentences too. Like, I can speak with my ear. If it's wrong sentences, students really have to make wrong sentences. They know what's wrong. So they make them silly sentences. When I use it in my classroom, they were all the time laugh and laugh, laugh. Oh, I can touch with my eyes all the time. So if you change that practice to dice, it will be really fun too. The other one is like this. We can match sentence practice with a subject and verb too, but you can use it for the story ones too. The other one like this, just uh, we can use this dice game for firefighters jobs and things. Not only with the magic wheels, we can use the dice. And different one is we can use this, you know, uh, handy board. Do you remember handy board? We can use the handy board the first side and the second side and then we give only one keyword They have to take out drag two other keywords to remember it Even you can erase it then they have to remember whole thing without seeing anything That's why I call it brain-based running like alpha practice Keep their memories longer and really stable so you can use only Magic Toolkit Handy Board to this game too. Only one reading page, you can adopt any games. Even you can adopt, you know, OX card too. This is the one how to use. So do you remember the storybook pages? Then if you see any storybooks, if you can find out the keywords or new words or something, not only reading the storybooks, not only answering and writing it, you can adopt these books, this, you know, uh, magic toolkit tools, and then just so we can use it for, you know, uh, fun classrooms. This is, you know, how to use magic toolkits. 
I will just try to show you one more time spinning magic wheels. It's spinning very well. And OX cards and the handy color boards. And then, well, um, I will show you. This is the package inside. And then there are nine cards, nine all different cars. You can use it. This can you see these empty cars? You can take it off. You can write and raise anything. And then difficult things like animals and colors. They are all printed. You can use even phonics and alphabet practice too. And dice, just the straw dice. There are two ones. You don't have to make it box all the time. You can fold and make it small. You can keep it in the bag and you can put in your drawer very easily. And then you can just make it box again. Not only for the dice, you can use it for small boxes too, okay? And don't forget this headband too. I hope you can just to love it, to enjoy it. Hope you enjoyed this class. You enjoyed it? So I hope you had a great time with me. I was really happy to see you. And that it was really good to see you here and talk to you. Thank you, me too. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. See you soon, someday next time. Be healthy, everyone. Be healthy. Healthy is really important. And then take care of yourself. And then just enjoy your job all the time. And then I, and see you next time. And stay safe, everyone, too.